ones here as well. Look, I noticed these. It's a fibula brooch in copper. I mean, that is just so gorgeous. You want to hold it and touch it. It's very tactile, that. What are they? It's a brooch decorated with engraved lines and insect, coloured enamel. There's copper in it somewhere because it's gone all that verdigris. On the back are the remains of an iron spring pin and catch paint. The three similar brooches have been found in Cornwall. Kindly lent. Well, that was near Senon. But that is beautiful. I mean, fancy finding the, the excitement of digging that out of the ground. Wow. And that's Roman. I think that's gorgeous. But that's only, that's only 2,000 years old. <laughs> and tell me about the wheel throne jar. Yeah, OK. Which, um, found in Carnglues, imitating the style of Gallo-Belgic wares from continental Europe. Um, yeah, it's just so perfect when you've been looking at the hand-built ones across the way. And then you look at that and it's just such a beautiful shape beautiful colour but what impressed me was that it's 100 BC and it's thrown on a wheel so I mean I didn't know that that was when wheel throwing started well <laughs> I mean I'm sure it started before that somewhere else maybe it's maybe. just so impressive that it, they had wheels and I wonder what kind of wheel it was as well because the wheels changed a lot over the years how you throw a pot on a wheel um, as you can see, if you go to the Bernard Leach Pottery, they've got the old, they've got the old, really old wheels there. But um, and then the patina, I think that's what you call it. Absolutely beautiful colour and texture, and you do want to feel it. You want the tactile you want experience, to touch it. yeah. Which is the same with a lot of things in here. You want to touch them, but you can't. So you just look. But I, can, I come back to that again and again, and I'm not bothered with all these shards <laughs> around it, but that is just lovely. Are you drawn to the pots because of your potting yeah. background? Yeah, I think so. I, 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 make, I make pots, but I do hand-built ones. But my son has just started throwing about, well, two years ago. He went to an evening class, and... Uh, it's great to hear him talking about throwing pots. So I do have that direct experience. And I went to his workshop and tried doing it as well <laughs> under his instruction. How did that go? Not very well. I, I, I couldn't get into it, really. I tried and I did produce two or three thrown pots, but I was really glad to get back to the handbills. <laughs> it's but, true. Yeah, so it's got that connotation as well that my son, who is now 45, uh, not youngster has taken up throwing. <laughs> Amazing. And is that because he's wanting to follow in your footsteps? Or? No, no. Well, he'd, he'd hand-built with me. He'd hand-built stuff, mostly sculptural, cat and that kind of thing. Um, and he, I could see he had a facility for it, definitely. But he didn't follow it through at all until his wife suggested he did an evening class in clay because she just knew he liked clay, you see. So he did this evening class. He said, as soon as I got on the wheel, I knew that was it. And I thought, I know that feeling of that instinct that just tells you this is it, this is right. And um, so it's lovely to share that with him. On the lovely adventure. <laughs> adventure of clay. So tell, tell me about some of these hand-built yeah, pots that you found yeah. particularly attractive. Mm. What, what are we looking at here? Well... There's, um, I think there are some complete ones, but it doesn't matter to me that they're not complete. The, it's the colour, beautiful surface on that, the crater-like bumpy surface. Um, so it's, it says burial urn with lug handles, uh, two, 2000 BC, associated with the second unknown and filled with human bones. Each had a grave gift of a perforated whetstone, shown here, so those are the whetstone. But it's the thing itself, and I just love the fact that you, you know, you can see inside it. The whole shape, actually, as a fragment, is lovely. I just love it. You know, the fact that it's got that big gap at the side. No one's tried to reconstruct it. 
it's just as it is. I love the little lug handle on the side. And then the colour, it's just such a beautiful, pale, pale, um, sandy colour. Uh, is it familiar to you the, 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 from the colour and the texture of the type of yeah. clays you've used yeah, in the past? Yeah, yeah yes, I've, I've had that result. And then the inside, you see, is, is burnt because that would have been... Well, I, why is the outside not burnt? Because it's just the inside, isn't it, that's got that uh, smoky colour. So... What might have happened? I don't know what might have happened. Um, well, if it had bones put in it that were hot and then it was covered up, I suppose it could have kept on burning and made that that colour just on the inside and then the outside is just normal as it would have been fired. But I don't know how they fired them. I, I've been trying to find out how they fire these pots. What kind of temperatures do you think yeah, they would have exactly. needed? Well, they'd have needed um, 990. Is that F Fahrenheit or centigrade? I don't know, I can't remember. But I fire biscuit now. Biscuit firing is 990. Um, and I think under that it would be... You see, if you're going to bury it and not have it exposed to the elements, that would be sufficient. So I don't think you'd have to have a very big fire to get it. Presumably they fired it in a fire. Um, not having electric. <laughs> Um, but this one, yeah, that one looks, that's more burnt on the inside. Um, and a different colour on the, I just, it's the surface that turns me on. I love the surfaces, the colour, the texture, the, uh, the pattern, the patterning on the bottom there. And the way that, you know, that line of the join is that, that crack, should I say? I don't think it's a join, I think it's a crack. So I love the cracks as well. It's just the whole thing is like a relic, isn't it? It's a relic. It's a relic. Do, of do any of them day. remind you of, of your style? Yeah, of work? definitely. That's why I think I so tune into them that I, my sculpture is very much influenced by the ancient cultures, whether it's Mexican, you know, the Maya, Maya, uh, or the Roman, the Greek. The old stuff, anyway, BC. <laughs> and so these are just, well, in fact, I did recreate one uh, at home, you know, in my, oh, in my studio. I recreated one and fired it. But I haven't done the smoking bit yet. I want to do that. I've just fired it to biscuit, which is the 990. So um, I don't know what the purpose was of me wanting to recreate. I just thought um, it would be an interesting thing to do. Do you think there might be an opportunity with the ones that you've created, a kind of textural interpretation of yeah, yeah. pots that are otherwise it, it behind glass in showcases? Yeah, absolutely. I think we, I, I had a little idea of putting it in the case and saying which one's the fake. <laughs> because when I did my A-level, I did an A-level ceramics at Penrith College. Because when I did my degree, I didn't do clay. I didn't use clay. So I did this ceramic A-level and he was great and he gave you freedom within a structure, which is lovely. And um, oh, we, went to do we went to dig clay out the ground as a field trip and I dug this clay out and then he showed us how to clean it, you know, get all out, all the impurities and we made a pot with it. I've still got it at home. And it looks like something like that, you know, similar to this where you've just dug it up and um, so, yeah, that's when I looked at it the other day, I thought it would be interesting to know if the general public could tell the real thing from a fake. <laughs> what do you think is the sort of the enduring quality of ceramics, yeah. particularly yeah, so from your point of view as a, as a mm. potter and ceramicist? Why are these so enduring? Well, you know, it's the human hand, isn't it, made... You know, all those thousands of years ago, somebody made that with their with their hands, hand built, not not thrown. But also, it had such a meaning to them. The meaning, you know, burying their ancestors. Uh, I don't know how important it was to them. 
to preserve their ancestors' bones, but I would imagine it was important. And you wonder how many generations, you know, as well. And did they dig them up and put more bones in and then put it back in the ground? Or did each person have a different um, urn? I don't know. Got to, I need to research that. Well, but maybe there's no answer. Maybe we don't know those sorts of um, the, those questions and answers. Um, but this little one here is so gorgeous. You know, you just want to pick it up and fondle it. What's, what are we looking at sundry. here? So that one is a burial urn with corded decoration, 2000 St. Burian from a barrow where it was inverted and covered with burnt human bones. It's just the same as the others saying with the others. But it doesn't have handles. And it's just, um, yeah, so if that had bones in it, maybe it was a, a baby's or a child, because it's so small. You wouldn't get many bones in that. Oh, I hadn't thought of that before. That's quite sad, isn't it? Look at the little baby. And then next to it is a beautiful handled beaker. Yes, it's got lugs, well, one lug, they call that, decorated with comb pressed and slashed. Oh, perhaps used to contain food or drink. So, yeah, because they used to put stuff in the grave, didn't they, for the person to use in the afterlife? So that might have been their drinking vessel or food or something. But that's got a lot of decoration on it. And the beautiful way that it's some of it's rubbed away. I love that. You see, I do that on my pots, on my sculptures, where I make it look as if it's worn by age and it's not. It's just me doing it. If we're thinking um, very broadly of your experience of really coming to absorb all of these artefacts in the mm. archaeology gallery yeah. here in um, Penley House. Yeah. Um, what would your general reflections and uh, reactions be right now in time? Well, it's made me um, look at my own... I think knowing I was... I'm involved with curatorship, citizens' curatorship too, has made me review over review an overview of my life where well, I left school at 16 I didn't go to university I didn't do anything except a secretarial course I was 40 before I went to art school so I have educated myself really through art you know I did art uh, when I was 40 a degree at university then I'd had children um, so my education, really, a lot of it has been self-education, what I'm interested in, and then through the art, I have um, discovered what I like and what I like making myself, and then relating that to here, to all this lovely ancient... Um, I mean, I do like the much broader arts as well. You know, I go to exhibitions at the Tate, etc., and I do a lot of research. I think it helps a lot, and you see, you can't do it with this. It helps a lot to know about the artists when you're looking at their work or the stuff they've made. It helps so much. You know, I do a lot of that in my life with other artists, you know, that I like from the 1950s, you see, because they are documented and we've got their pictures pictures or sculptures it's just a mystery isn't it what who these creators were of, of all this archaeological stuff and that's intriguing and then you make your own stories as well <laughs> I like making stories yeah so as well as creatively wanting to do doing 3d I also do writing as well and painting and drawing printmaking and all that stuff so um, I know that finding out about somebody's background and why they're doing what they're doing um, and where they fit in to, to that um, continuum of art is fascinating for me.